What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another training guide advice video. So a lot of people asking me about this. A lot has changed with V2.4 and obviously a lot has changed with training up players and newcomers are asking me as well as veterans, people making mistakes with training up their players, right? The first thing I'll say, I'm going to do a video on this in my live stream on Thursday where we discuss this in more detail uh, because there's a lot of depth in this to get into. But firstly, right? There is going to be no one size fits all for your squad, your tactics, your formation, or your players and how you train them, right? Depending on your play style, depending on how good you are at the game, depending on how you want to play the game, everything's going to be different. But with this video, I'm going to give you a couple of tips to kind of have a foundation, especially if you're just learning the mechanics of the game, a foundation of how to train players properly, especially for V2.4, because a lot of stuff has changed, including how I would even train players with the way that the gameplay is at the moment. Do I think they are going to change the gameplay a little bit? Yes, I think that they will, but I think it mightn't be for a while, especially with stamina, right? So here you're going to get an example of maybe a Valverde that I would have trained before. 12 into passing, into dribbling is going to be largely ignored, but I'm going to show you with V2.4, right? This is kind of an issue with V2.4 at the moment. And a lot of people are going to make mistakes with training players with the way the gameplay is at the moment. So we've got an example here, right? We're getting the ball. It's played through the sun. I'm in full control. Up and McKenna gets there first. Before V2.4 and before the patch, I would have taken a touch on this and I would have drawn my opponent in. But with V2.4, I'm just going to get rid of it first time, man. Because you're going to see when you actually sit on the ball, right? And you'll see as this video plays out, okay? When you sit on the ball, whether it's him, you'll see that when he's actually penetrating and getting space where I'm barely able to defend him, it's all first time passes. You'll see here again, I get the ball in space with Messi. He's chasing me with Son. The ball is practically coming to my feet with Messi, one of the best players in the game, 100 rated overall or so. And all I have to do is just turn and switch it out to the wing and I'm going to be on an attack. But after V2.4, and the patch update that went with that, I think things have slightly changed. Well, I will say slightly, I'd say a lot, because I'm going to take an extra touch on this, and you're going to see what happens, right? And you're going to see towards the end of this video as well, there's even better examples of it, so stick around for that. But look what happens when I sit on the ball with Messi. Instead of just playing it back to Kimmich first time with a little triangle, he's going to turn me over in possession. I'm going to block him again because he sits on the ball. But the minute you start first time passing, look, throwing in a couple of first time passes, or taking barely one touch on it, or maybe just a second on the ball, it's going to open stuff up, right? So this is Valverde. He's a very, very dominant player at the moment. He's a beast box-to-box -box defender. He's not that expensive. A lot of people are using him. Obviously, he's a beast for Real Madrid in real life as well. And he's kind of a likable player to have in eFootball if you are starting off looking for a very strong box-to-box -box player that can cover a lot of ground, right? His stamina, the way he trains up, doesn't become an issue with V2.4 because of the other stats that you train up with him. Because I'm going to be training this guy with V2.4 in mind, right? So, straight away I'm drawn to his speed, his acceleration, obviously his stamina, and his defensive capability with his aggression and his defensive engagement. The higher the aggression, the higher the stamina needs to be. Because when I'm not controlling him, the AI are going to be controlling him, and the aggression is going to take over his stamina a little bit as well, right? So before I would have trained him up like this, I would have pumped into passing and I would have pumped into defending. And then I would have had a look at speed and acceleration to secondary to what I wanted. Because look, I'm going to be playing a 4-3-3. I'm going to be playing a 3-5-2 uh, or a 3-4-3. I don't really need him dragging the ball forward. Like I don't. This is before V2.4. This is how I would have trained him, right? An example of how I would have trained him. Not worrying about stamina, not worrying about tight possession or dribbling or anything like that. After V2.4, right, a lot has changed. So I'm going to be getting a 90 overall Valverde, but this is how I would train him now, right? Yes, we still need to focus on passing, but passing has gone so chaotic that there is no really point in having a huge passing stat on it. So we're going to focus on stamina. We're going to focus on dribbling. We're going to focus on tight possession. We're not going to focus too much on uh, passing. We're not going to focus too much on aerial strength. We don't really need that for this uh, player and for the formation that I want to use him in. But dribbling is going to be the key one here, lads, for me with this card. I think a lot of people are sleeping on dribbling. And what dribbling is going to control is that tight possession is an extremely important stat now. You will see even, you know, with Joe Felix, the ball comes through here. This is how you're going to probably concede a lot of goals, right? Now, we're going to break this down in a second. That doesn't really come into it with my dribble in a tight possession because I don't put my foot on the ball, right? But we do lose the ball out here. Again, you'll see here with Timber, right? Before V2.4, I'm taking a touch on that and it doesn't really 
concern me because I don't need to have a high touch or a high tight possession. That's a good example there with Timber. But here, when the ball is flowing through like this, he just kicks it up, he's booting it up. And then when I'm in this position, my defense is going to kick in if I'm not going to be, you know, defensively turned on by this um, or turned on to this. Uh, and like locked into this that I should probably be switching off Kimmich here or else I should be pressing out and letting the defender manually or automatically defend for me let the AI defend for me but when Salah gets the ball here these chances wouldn't have bothered me with V before V2.4 lads at all but he's actually able to get the chance and you know Salah's got tight possession tight dribbling and that results in a goal for him right but if you look at some of the stats even some of the recently released stats you can kind of see where they're they're kind of pushing these new players um, of where they're need, where they're trying to balance these players, right? So I've seen lots of people say, oh, I got Sané, you know, I boosted him up. He has 96 acceleration or 97 acceleration and he's terrible. He can't do this. He can't do that. And a lot of the reason for that is going to be a combination of a lack of stamina and a lack of tight possession because they, those stats stay quite low even when you pump in a lot of stats into them. We've 12 pumped into lower body strength there and he still doesn't have that high stamina. This is even worse when you look at the standard players. You could look at Neymar here. If we were to put in every stat into stamina, we're still only going to get it up to 80, which I would say Neymar will last till about maybe the 70 minute before he starts to noticeably slow down with the stamina. And that's obviously going to come at the cost of everything else when you're training, right? So Kamavinga, another box-to-box -box demon of a player, more of a creative player, I would say, especially in V2.4. We would have never, I would have never upgraded his dribbling lads for the role that I wanted to play with him when I was buying and an upgrading Declan Rice, Patrick Vieira, Makalele, any of those guys I never worried about tight possession and I never worried about stamina because the game was not geared towards that and it didn't really punish stamina it didn't really punish you having bad dribbling stats even with players that you don't need you know to have high dribbling stats in in real like football as you think you have your wingers and you have your AMF your technical players are going to have that tight possession it has changed quite a lot, right? So keep that in mind when you are training up players. I will have a more in-depth video discussing this on my live stream Thursday. We will also be playing some subscribers. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Um, but yeah, look, when we are training up Kamavinga now, we're going to kind of with V2.4 in our forefront, forefront of our mind when we're training players up now, we are going to largely ignore passing and we are going to turn that passing into dribbling to get that tight possession up as high as we can. Similar with Goretzka. This is a Goretzka that I trained up. His tight possession of 77 and his stamina of 82. Kuhn did the same. You can see there, very poor tight possession and stamina is quite poor as well as a right back or a centre back. I'm going to have to be very careful when I'm actually on the ball with these guys. Ansu Fati, 93 overall, stamina 71 is going to be a bit of a disaster. So yeah, let me know what you guys think if you agree or disagree with this. Hopefully it helps you out and I'll talk to you in a bit. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace. See you Thursday.